especially when considering that coal's carbon emissions and power generation are at least twice that pace. On top of these core energy sources, the renewables will also have a role. Although technical and economic hurdles remain in the way of their rapid deployment. Furthermore, the existing global energy system is massive and will need time to transform, even as alternatives and renewables are needed. But progress is being made. Costs are coming down, and the long term role of renewables is indisputable. Let me also dispel any notion that the petroleum industry views these sources as competitors or displacers of demand. In Saudi Arabia, for example, our vision is to turn the kingdom into a global solar hub. And we are investing heavily in the research, development, and employment of solar energy. However, that doesn't mean the world can afford to provide costly subsidies on an ongoing basis at the expense of economic development and fiscal benefits. Rather, the appropriate energy mix should be left to the market and technology to determine. Using the WBC's terms, perhaps we should say that we should allow the jazz scenario to take place. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope that we will make this progress with a united view to the world outside, which is that all energy sources will be required in the long term. Yet meeting our 2050 energy goals will be easier said than done. Let me outline what I believe are the four key prerequisites for success. First, we need progressive yet pragmatic and plausible global energy policies. Since all energy sources will be required, we shouldn't be maturely winners and losers. Selectively subsidize, set unworkable targets, or apply unrealistic regulatory and fiscal regimes. Instead, we should invest in technologies and let them mature to offer confidence, large scale deployment, and let this stress again allow the margins to work. Also, while the industry need to further enhance the safety and environmental performance of energy sources of all types, there are countless examples of well-intentioned but poorly thought-out policies having multiple unintended consequences. Consider, for example, the undue emphasis on transportation when debating climate change. When in fact, the 50 dirtiest electric power plants in the United States, all coal fired by the way, emit roughly as much CO2 as half of America's entire fleet of passenger vehicles. Consider also that mandates of biofuels have caused numerous triple effects, like higher food prices, that cannot be justified given their questionable environmental benefits on a life cycle. So policies need to be more rigorous and holistic, and I believe World Energy Council can play a significant advocacy role here. The second prerequisite is that adequate, timely, and long-term investments, financial investments, must be made in all energy sources to ensure sufficient supplies of safety and reliably produced and delivered to new consumers. In just the next two decades, total energy investment is estimated to be in the range of $40 trillion. That is equivalent to the combined GDP of China, the EU, and the United States. These investments are, are, are staggering and to fund them continuously. Projects need to be profitable and bankable. For that to happen, we need more certainty in the future direction of world energy markets, we need relatively healthy prices, and the pragmatic policies I refer to earlier. Market stability is also critical, and here Saudi Aramco continues to play a pivotal role. 
In the past few years alone, we have swung our production by more than one and a half million barrels per day in order to address market supply imbalances. And we continue to make massive investments to maintain the world's largest spare oil production capacity more than two million barrels a day. But that's only one aspect of our broader investment across the value chain. As part of our drive to become the world's most integrated energy company, we have increased our annual capital budget tenfold from four million to forty billion dollars in the last ten years. In addition, we have scaled up our investment in talent, R and D, technology. In fact, my third prerequisite is game-changing, pace-setting R&D and technology, because as I indicated earlier, we need to recover more fossil fuels at lower costs and make them greener, make nuclear power plants safer and better dispose of their spent fuels, and enhance the economic viability and competitiveness of alternatives and renewables to unleash their full protection. We've embraced technology in Saudi Aramco, where our strategic goal is to become one of the world's leading creators of energy technologies by 2020. We're multiplying our funding for in-house R&D while forming world-class strategic alliances as part of our open network innovation model. And to mitigate the environmental impact of fossil fuels, we're pursuing a broad-based, long-term carbon management program targeting both fixed and mobile sources of carbon emissions. In fact, we're working with the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology to investigate carbon capture as well as its conversion into useful products. That will make hydrocarbon energy more sustainable Users and consumers alike. And it's just the sort of collaborative win-win we need to see more of. Which leads me to my last prerequisite, collaboration. Let's not jeopardize our chance to make history by working at cost purposes. We must avoid this at all costs, because we need this all energy sources, all industry all governments, all academic and research institutions, and all energy bodies working together in the global energy village. Speaking to the global village, we agree that ready access to clean energy is a right for all, not a privilege for a few. Then I believe this Congress should champion this goal and ensure that it becomes an integral part who has future development agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, providing adequate, affordable, and acceptable energy to 9 billion people will be the challenge of our lives and of those who follow our footsteps. But it also represents us with the most inspirational opportunity. So let us relish the fact that we are all day two and learn big one roof. And I have no doubt that if we, like our host country, harness all the resources at our disposal, not the least of which the remarkable ingenuity in this room and across our industry, then we too, the energy industry, can astonish the world by achieving a sustainable energy future and 9 billion people 